Hi guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous, over-the-top beautiful day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here in this undisclosed swamp. We are halfway through January, meaning the dead of winter. It is Friday, January 15th, 2021, and uh, after this rant, I get to spend this gorgeous afternoon before the next rain and freezing weather blows in with my computer geek dealing with the latest collapse of my six-month-old $1,600 computer. This is the backup computer I bought that I'm bringing this to you. And since it is Friday, obviously we are going to do what we try to do every Friday here at Collapse Chronicles. Oh yes, I am Sam Mitchell. This is Collapse Chronicles bringing you this <clears throat> this week's ecological meltdown roundup rant where we check in with mongabay.com with Rhett Butler and the boys and girls over there at mongabay.com to see what's on their minds uh, as they bring us their weekly laundry list of how this planet is collapsing while we are distracted by the distraction to the distraction. And uh, I was I was just going to skip over this, but uh, I'm just going to start off with this one by Rhett Butler himself interviewing uh, some clueless moron named Nigel topping talking about how we're going to turn climate ambitions into reality yes uh, so uh, it, 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 you know uh, I just do not understand why Rhett Butler of all people on this planet continues to cling to this hopium soaked apocalyptimism but uh, since this is part of the collapse, you know, hopium-soaked apocalyptimism, got to keep track of it. All right, take it away, Rhett and Nigel. Uh, 2020 was supposed to be a landmark year for taking stock on climate and biodiversity commitments and determining how societies move forward to address the world's most pressing problems. Instead, the corona panic intervened, leading to the postponement or cancellation of many events, including the dog and pony show known as the 26th United Nations Climate Conference. Um, let's see, where are we? Uh, this is all a lead-in to, to his interview with, uh, with Apocaloptimus Nigel Topping and Gonzalo Munoz. They were appointed as high-level climate action champions. I'm not sure who appointed them. I guess someone in the U.S. All right, so we're going to hear from some high-level climate action champions. What is their role? Quote, our role is quite literally to champion the ambition and actions taken by non-state actors in addressing climate change. This means that Gonzalo and I work with partners across the world, cities, states, and regions, businesses, investors, and civil society groups to raise the awareness of ambition for and levels of action being taken to address climate change. Yes, yes, yes. I'm sure that will be a exciting interview that I'm going to have to uh, miss, Rhett. Sorry. Uh, oh, 
Okay. You know, Red has really become quite the interviewer uh, this year. I know that Rhett as himself has taken over the interview duties. And in this interview, he's interviewing a fellow named David Bondeman to talk about investing in African wildlife. Yes. So this is how uh, this guy... David Bond, who is David Bondeman? Hmm, he is a billionaire. David Bondeman is one of the best known figures in private equity, having made his name by taking over undervalued companies and turning them around. His lifetime of investing has made him a billionaire. Yes, but. The billionaire is also a philanthropist who is out to save the planet. Yes, okay. Anyway, moving along, what is um, the uh, video of the week? You know, Manga Bay has its own YouTube channel. So this week's video, you can find this over there on their YouTube channel. Uh, Red is asking the question, can you, can you, yes, I, I don't know if he means you personally, or can anybody rehabilitate land that used to be a coal mine? The answer to the question, can you or anyone else on the planet rehabilitate land that used to be a coal mine is no, you cannot. Okay. So, uh, all right. Manga Bay has some vaccine news. Okay. There is no vaccine for climate change. All right. This is the newest uh, statement from the UN Environment. Uh, end of the deal. All right, what is the UN talking about here? The planet is set to warm by 3 degrees C, otherwise known as 5.4 Fahrenheit, above pre-industrial levels just this century, but the world remains unprepared for climate change. Yes, more than a quarter of countries still do not have one single national level adaptation plan, and financing for adaptation measures falls far short of what is needed. Yes, less than 5% of adaptation projects have yielded any real benefits in terms of resilience. According to a survey of 1,700 pro projects, uh, less than 5% of the 1,700 climate adaptation projects uh, have shown any promise whatsoever. And I can only imagine what that promise was. Okay. All right, where this is the weekly update on deforestation spurred by road project creeps, creeps closer to Sumatra Wildlife Haven. A road in Sumatra that cuts through the only habitat on Earth that still houses rhinos, tigers, elephants, and orangutans has recently been upgraded, stoking fears of greater human incursion into the rainforest. Already, the road has seen a proliferation of human settlements along a section in a forest adjacent to Ganung Lucer National uh, 
park resulting in the loss so far of 1,200 hectares, otherwise known as 3,000 acres of forest, you know, right next to the national park. Environmentalists say it is only a matter of time, yeah, like uh, a week before the encroachment spreads into the national park, triggering fears that it will fragment the habitat, the habitat of the critically endangered Sumatran orangutan. The road upgrade was carried out despite calls against it from UNESCO, you know, the UN, which lists the national park as a world heritage site and has identified infrastructure projects. Can you say the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative, which you can believe this is part of, as a threat to ecosystems? Do you think so, that the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative is a threat to ecosystems? I can't remember uh, who was it that I interviewed last year, you know, one of the regular contributors to Manga Bay. I'm having a senior moment uh, claiming correctly that right now, at least, the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative is the single biggest threat to planet Earth, far outpacing climate, the, the threat posed by climate change, at this point, it is habitat destruction still remains the number one uh, horse of the apocalypse. Uh, and the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative is the number one horseman riding that horse. All right. Uh, you know, guys, I am just skipping through a lot of these because I have to get down to the computer repair shark uh, repair shark repair sharp uh, okay speaking of sharks whale shark stranding points to silting of Indonesia's Kendon Bay yes I thought this was uh, these strandings, I guess they've moved now from whales to whale sharks. Uh, the stranding has highlighted the consequences of the rapid silting of the bay amid a spate of development projects in the area as the clearing of land allows dirt to run into waterways. Hmm, imagine that with the accumulated sediment cutting in half the depths of Kendon Bay uh, amid the silting fish catches have declined and there are also now indications of heavy metal contamination of the water and you can take this story and multiply it times 10,000 probably you can go right downstream from uh, where you're looking at this picture in front of you. Uh, so what is the situation for those tiny few patches of the Amazon still untouched by humans? Patches of Amazon untouched by humans still feel the impact of climate change. Yes. Researchers looking at the abundance of insect-eating birds in a pristine patch of forest deep inside the Brazilian Amazon have seen populations of dozens of bird species decline over the past 35 years. Huh. The remoteness of the site and the still intact tree cover rule out direct human activity as a factor for the population declines, with researchers attributing the phenomenon 
to the warmer and more intense droughts caused by climate change, which in turn puts stress on the birds and their food sources, meaning the insects. Uh, the finding calls into question the idea that an area protected from direct human activity is sufficient to guarantee the conservation of its biodiversity. Yes, a uh, similar phenomenon has been observed elsewhere in Brazil where rising temperatures, severe droughts, and irregular rainfall may lead to the extinction of birds and mammals over the next 60 years, even inside national parks. Uh, th this is just the latest evidence of how completely uh, doomed we are. That uh, e even if we could uh, make any area left on this planet uh, a protected area from humans, uh, it's, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, climate change does not, uh, doesn't stop at a big electric fence. You cannot have, you know, anti-climate change patrols like you can anti-poaching patrols. Anyway, guys, we're out of here. Uh, here is the latest up date on the deregulation law in Indonesia. This is 100% part of the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative. Deregulation law raises corruption risk in Indonesia's forestry sector. Hmm, imagine that, that experts have warned that a controversial deregulation act will serve as a springboard for greater corruption in Indonesia's forestry sector. Yes. Uh, they say, you know, the, the new uh, law, you know, the, the gutting of the already joke environmental laws in Indonesia will allow companies such as palm oil plantation operators to whitewash their illegal occupation of forest or take control of even larger swaths of land than permitted. Yes, do you think so? And you can take this story and spread it all around the planet. Okay, so what is the latest uh, estimate on how much tropical forest has been lost? How about an area the size of California? An area of forest roughly the size of California was cleared, meaning chainsawed, bulldozed, and burned across the tropics and subtropics between 2004 and 2017, largely for commercial agriculture, finds a new assessment published by the World Wildlife Fund. And of course, uh, this is before Jair Bozo Nero even took over the reins down there in Brazil. Uh, there you go. These, the areas included in the study are in Latin America, Africa, and Asia. Um, using satellite-based data sets, the report finds 43 million hectares, otherwise known as 166,000 square miles of deforestation during the period. Nearly two-thirds of that loss occurred in Latin America. And of course, the rates uh, have absolutely skyrocketed since 2017 as... Uh, 
the attacks on Latin American rainforest have gone completely into overdrive. Uh, okay. Let's see. And guys, again, I you can go on mangabay.com and get this newsletter sent into your own box, so I don't have to sit here and read it to you every Friday. But I'm glad to uh, to do that. Uh, <laughs> monitoring tropical deforestation is now free and easy. There you go. It is free and easy to monitor the collapse of a planet. Yes. Uh, what's going on with marine protected areas in Peru? Hmm. More than 1,000 species of fish, more than 1,000 mollusks and crustaceans, and a bunch of other things are known to live in Peruvian waters, and many species remain to be discovered and categorized. Yet, despite its rich biodiversity, Peru has exactly zero marine protected areas. Yes, nearly 10 years ago, a movement began to urge the Peruvian government to declare one in the tropical north of the country, home to more than 70% of Peru's fish and invertebrate species. You can see how much progress has been made on that front in 10 years. Uh, let's see, this is... Uh, Manga Bay spin on the uh, those six rangers gunned down. Six rangers killed in deadly militia attack in DRC's Virunga National Park. The, the incident is just the latest in a series of deadly attacks against rangers working inside the park. Uh, Land pressures and instability in eastern DRC have increasingly brought rangers from Virunga into conflict with armed groups in the region. Yep, yep, yep. You will not believe this. This is just the latest report pointing out that Asia pulp and paper, these planet eaters, you know, with the single most honest name, uh, Asia pulp and paper, by their very name, are dedicated to uh, turning Asia's rainforest into pulp and paper, failing its own sustainability goals. Yes, the fox is failing to guard the hen house. A new report urges bank and banks and buyers to stop doing business with Asia Pulp and Paper, one of the world's largest paper producers, for its alleged failure to uphold its own sustainability commitments. Yes, the report by the Environmental Paper Network list a litany of violations. Do you think so? The company has denied the allegation, saying it continues to make strides. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, let's see. Anyway, we're going to skip over the C word. Uh, what is going on with drug traffickers in Colombia and Ecuador? Colombian and Ecuadorian indigenous communities live in fear as drug traffickers invade. 
Yes. Uh, indigenous territories have seen increasing deforestation in recent years, which sources attribute to oil extraction, logging, and the clearing of land <coughs> for illicit crops, mainly coca, which is used to make cocaine. Armed groups control the trade and processing of coca, and sources say those who oppose them face violent reprisal. Do you think so? All right, let's go look at a Spain-sized swath of the Brazilian Amazon. Lack of protection leaves Spain-sized swath of Brazilian Amazon up for grabs. 50 million hectares, otherwise known as 124 million acres of undesignated forest in the Brazilian Amazon, an area the size of Spain is under growing threat of illegal occupation and deforestation facilitated by a controversial government land registry. Yes. A Greenpeace Brazil study shows that 62% of the forest along one stretch of the BR-163 highway has been illegally invaded and then registered by the occupiers with this BS Rural Environmental Registry. Uh, yes. Um, the problem of land grabbing in the Amazon, often by speculators looking to sell to cattle ranchers and crop growers, is not new, but the situation has intensified under the administration of President Jair Bozo Nero. The Greenpeace researchers, researchers say there is little prospect of a crackdown on land grabbing under the present political scenario. Yes, do you think so? Uh, anyway, we just heard another version of this story. Cocaine production driving deforestation into Colombian National Park. A anyway, guys, good Lord, I can go on and on with this, but I see that I am up to almost 30 minutes, and I have got to get down to the computer repair shop to try to get uh, this POS $1,600 computer up and running once again so two weeks from now it can crash again. And uh, that is how I am spending this absolutely gorgeous day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. And I suggest you get out there and enjoy this beautiful day while you still can. Bye guys.